Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to continue our look at the method of Lagrange multipliers. Now the example that I'm going to discuss in this video is a little bit more abstract, a little bit more complicated than the regular examples you see. In particular, the, the example I'm going to discuss has two constraints rather than one. Okay, but before we get to that, let's uh, motivate the topic. Why are these ideas important? Well, the method of Lagrange multipliers is a very powerful technique and it gives us the power to maximize or minimize a function subject to a constraint or constraints. Now, where would you see such a, kind, uh, such a problem? Well, in very simple terms, imagine that you're asked to design the dimensions of a box that maximizes the volume subject to a certain fixed amount of building material and cost. Now, the function there that you would want to maximize is the volume of the box and the constraint would be the building material or the, the cost. But the example I'm going to do is you know, quite um, theoretical but I hope it gives you a flavor for the uh, importance and the applications of these kinds of methods. Okay, so we're asked to maximize this function subject to two constraints. Okay, so we're going to define the so-called Lagrangian function, which we denote by L. And it's defined in the following way. Now the lambda 1 and the lambda 2 are the so-called Lagrange multipliers for this problem. Now they're just, they're just numbers. So if f and g1 and g2 are defined in, in the, the above way, let's actually write them out in full. Okay, and what the, uh, the method of Lagrange multipliers involves is actually calculating the critical points of L. Now we know from calculus to calculate the critical points then uh, what, what we do is calculate the partial derivatives of L and set them equal to zero and solve. So let's form the partial derivatives of L, set them equal to zero and then solve the resulting equations. Now by a subscript here I mean dl dx, the partial derivative of L with respect to x. So we go up here, differentiate with respect to x, holding everything else a constant, and we'll get something like this. Similarly, L sub y, partial derivative of L, of L with respect to y. L sub z. Okay, so to find the critical points, we set these equal to zero. Now you may be thinking, well, hang on, L also depends on lambda 1 and lambda 2. What about the partial derivatives with respect to lambda 1 and lambda 2? Well, actually, if we calculate those partial derivatives and set them equal to zero, they're actually the constraint um, equations. So, so I don't really need to do those calculations. Okay, well, I'm going to number these equations because I'll refer back to them and I'm going to number these as C1 and C2, constraint 1 and constraint 2. So what I, what I would like to do is solve the five equations for x, y, z, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Okay, so what I can rearrange first to get x equals lambda 1 up here and I can rearrange down here to get z equals minus one half lambda two. 
Now I can rearrange C1 to get y equals 2x. So what I'm trying to do now is just simplify everything and see if I can come up with x, y, and z, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Okay, well, I, if I look at these two, I can immediately form a relationship between y and lambda 1. y will equal 2 lambda 1. Okay, and now I can form, if I look at this, y equals lambda, uh, sorry, y equals 2 lambda 1 and C2, then I can form a rela relationship between Z and lambda 1. So Z will equal negative 2 lambda 1. Okay, well let's look now at these two underlined expressions here. I can form a relationship between lambda 1 and lambda 2. Okay, if I look at this, set them, um, just substitute in here and rearrange, I'll get lambda 2 equals 4 lambda 1. Now, I can take that and substitute it in here for lambda 2, okay? So if I substitute in there, I'm going to get lambda 1 equals 2 thirds and lambda 2 equals eight thirds. So this is the important information here that we're going to work with. What I can do now is back substitute and get x, y and z from these. Okay. So x will equal two thirds, y will equal four thirds, and z will equal minus four thirds. So, what information have we got there? Well, we know that our Lagrangian function has a critical point at these coordinates. Okay? So let's make a conclusion. Now F has a, um, the, the method of Lagrange multipliers then says that F will have a maximum or minimum value at that point and from the question we know that F is going to have a maximum. Now, what is the maximum value of f at this point? Well, what is the value of f, I guess? Well, if you go back to your f and just evaluate it at this point, you'll get 4 thirds. Now that's the question, the question finished. Let's look at the bigger picture though. What are some techniques or some ideas that you can use in all sorts of problems? Well, if f is our function to maximize or minimize, and we have two constraints, then the method of Lagrange multipliers involves calculating and comparing the critical points of the so-called Lagrangian function, where lambda one and lambda two are the Lagrange multipliers. 
Now to solve the resulting simultaneous equations, some creativity is often required. In the example that we just did, we had five equations and five unknowns. It took us a little while to solve them, but um, it, it, it was pretty straightforward. Now, if L has more than one critical point, then what you do is you compare the values of F at each critical point to determine which gives a max or min value. In our example, there was only one critical point, so I didn't have to compare um, values at all. So it's important that you understand you learn mathematics by doing mathematics. So here's an example that I've left you with. It's very, very similar to the example that I've solved.